Welcome everybody to BMNG Drive and today we're taking a look at the Fiat 126P ELX also known as the Polsky Fiat as well as also known as a Maluc which is, stands for the little one and uh, yeah this is based on the uh, Fiat 125 or the 126 the standard one but this is the Poland version as uh, yeah Fiat stopped production of uh, the uh, 126 in 1993 whereas this continued on until 2000 but yeah it's generally considered its own model because it's uh, really rather quite basic and uh, yeah not particularly stylish unlike the uh, Fit 500 that uh, this uh, newer version was based off of so this version was produced between 1994 and 2000 and uh, yeah it normally comes with a 0.65 litre engine and this still does but it's a sport version because the standard version only does about 63 64 miles an hour which is enough for some of our tests but it takes a hell of a long time to get there so uh yeah let's uh, firstly uh do uh, some uh, grid map testing and then we'll go on to free tests on the other side see if we can roll over explode or go for a cinder block wall okay so uh, yeah i'm not expecting this to survive very long as most of the bodywork is already falling off very bouncy car as well. It's a good mod nonetheless. It's a remastered version of one that was around a while ago, so uh, it should at least hold up a bit better than the older one would have. It likes to roll over a lot, as you've uh, probably seen already. The engine is quite loose as well, so if that stays in, I'll be surprised. And uh, yeah, unsurprisingly, it's extremely light as well, so it gets thrown around extremely easily. Like that. Well, it is tough at least. Even if the chassis has bent and the wheels are moving around. That is not looking pretty good. The suspension is collapsed, at least on one side. That rear right wheel does not look like it's going to live for very much longer. Especially when we do that. Oh dear. Everything fell out. The engine, the wheel. Yeah, that did not last very long. It does also obviously uh, get a little bit spiky at times. But nonetheless, let's get to the uh, free tests that we're going to be doing. And uh, yeah, uh, see if it can handle being rolled over, exploded, or shot through a cinder block wall. Right, so let's get to the rollover sled. See what happens with this. I'm expecting a lot of bouncing and maybe some wheels and engines falling out, just like it happened on the grid map. Because, yeah, this is an extremely light vehicle and it gets bounced around extremely easily. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, s take a look and see. Oops. I uh, did not do that in time, unfortunately. I pressed the wrong button. But, yeah, regardless, the doors come off. I think we've lost a seat as well. Yes, we have. There it is. Which is... Yeah, not what I'd call safe if the seat is going to fall out while rolling over, to be honest, because typically seats stay in a car when they're uh, crashed. So, uh, yeah, not the best of starts, clearly. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, see if it can uh, handle a second rollover. Hopefully we don't lose the driver's seat, because then that really will be a fail. The roof mostly held up there the worst roof shape we've had, I think. Let's see what happens. Yeah, those wheels are going to get bent up. They are easily a weak point on this car. Yeah, there goes the roof a bit more. Extremely bouncy car. And we've landed back where the seat was, so... Win-win, I see, I think. 
But yeah, it didn't really take much more damage there. Uh, the roof has obviously gone in a bit more, but the wheels seem to be mostly straight, so... Yeah, it didn't take all that much extra damage, surprisingly. It is easy to roll over, even on its own, because of the additional power that we've been giving it. We uh, really did need, to be honest, because... Yeah, 64 miles an hour, whatever, is not a, uh, enough for us. Don't apologise, I pressed the wrong button again. But yeah, 64 mile an hour is not enough. Well, it is, but it's getting there that really isn't enough because it's extremely slow at getting up to its top speed. Whereas this really is not slow at getting up to 60 miles an hour, which is what we ultimately need. Well, I think that's past in some regards, because even though obviously this passenger seat has fallen out, the driver's seat has stayed in, the rear seats have stayed in, the roof hasn't particularly been mangled all that much. And yeah, we've lost the door, but we've still kept the driver's door as well, so uh, yeah, mostly a pass there. Not a uh, one with flying colours, but mostly a pass regardless. So let's uh, see what happens when we crash into some barrels now. It's been a this being a mod, I'm not expecting it to be the most stable of things, but only one way to find out about hopefully uh, rolling it over. Expected to go flying because it's, like I said, extremely light. Oh dear, everything's come apart. gone way up into space. That's probably the furthest any cars exploded upwards. Yeah, there's not much left of this. The engine and drive line have surprisingly survived, but nothing else has. I mean, it still moves, probably because the engine and drive line is at the back, but we have no real steering anymore. No real stability because the chassis has completely bent all out of shape. So, yeah, that's a fail, that is. Especially because both of the seats at the front have now gone. Uh, no idea where, but they have. So, uh, yeah, that's a fail. Right, let's see if we can deal with a cinder block wall. I'm sure it can. It's so small, it probably does sneak up, un sneak under most of, it, most of it, to be honest. Maybe it'll just crumple up severely. Yeah, that's easily the worst that any cars had to deal with the uh, cinder block wall, to be honest. I don't even know where the... Where's the seat's gone? Hang on. Investigation time. Oh, it's just fallen backwards, I think. Yeah, the seats have completely jarred outwards. Uh, the windscreen has completely pushed back as well. Which is not good at all. And we can't even open the door, it's that jammed up. So yeah. Not what I'd call a success there. So yeah, the grid map fail. Uh, rollover test half and half. Uh, explosive barrel test fail and cinder block wall fail. So uh, yeah, let's get onto the uh, uh, crash hall and see what this can do at 30, 40 and 60 mile an hour small overlap impact tests. Right, so here we are at the crash hall, so I'm really not expecting this to do well in any of these crash tests, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, let's see what happens at 30 miles an hour, which every car has so far passed. So, uh, let's see if this Polsky Fiat is going to be any different. Obviously, the original car with its original engine would have been able to do this fine, but I really doubtful that the original engine could have done 60 miles an hour, so that's why we have to go for this more powerful engine, which revs up a lot higher than the uh, standard version. Uh, yeah. Well, the driver would have been maybe fine, but the passenger certainly wouldn't, because the seat has completely gone backwards on itself. Any more impact and uh, or any more speed, and I imagine that seat is going to go flying. As long as, as well as the driver's seat, and as you can see, the chassis has bent downwards. 
the roof has moved upwards and the windscreen has moved back so uh, yeah even though overall it looks like a survival crash we're uh, certainly not in a good shape even at 30 miles an hour so uh, what's gonna happen at 40? I think we're gonna die to be honest be a reason why this car was originally so slow is because it was so dangerous at any kind of speed. Into oblivion we go. Ow. 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 Well, that's the first 40 mile an hour failure that we've had. by a long way as well. Let's look at where the wheel has gone. It's now where the windscreen was by a substantial margin. Surprisingly the uh, pass the driver's seat hasn't completely come away. Oh maybe it has. It, yeah it definitely has. Uh, they've both fallen off their mountings and uh, yeah meaning that any protection that they were offering is now nil along with the seat belts and uh, yeah be unlikely to get this door open as well oh maybe we can no it's just gonna rebound so you'd have to have someone hold it for you to get it keep it open and get you out and I doubt the uh, this one that one isn't quite as severe in terms of staying in place but yeah the driver's side one is and uh, yeah this isn't instilling a lot of confidence really for a uh, 60 mile an hour to be honest. It's going to fail at a slow speed like 40 then. Yeah, we are not going to survive a <laughs> high impact like this. Slowing it down so it can be a bit more precise with the steering. So we don't have to keep reloading like we did have to uh, in the uh, previous episode. Polsky stop. Yeah, that is awful. <laughs> That's probably the worst one we've had. Uh, I mean, the Autobello might have been just as bad, but at least that was, I think, decent at least for, uh, 30 and 40 miles an hour, whereas this has been bad 40 upwards for sure. Well, far from perfect at 30, so uh, yeah, that is pretty bad. But then again, I wasn't really expecting any better, to be fair, but yeah could at least have been a little bit better at least in terms of the roof or maybe the pass the door staying in place or the chassis not completely screwing up or, or just basically the seats not coming out you know a lot of that is just basic stuff and yet it's not managed any of that so uh, yeah no real surprises there but let's uh, get onto the highway and see how this deals with a couple of crashes against cars that are similarly sized to it although obviously not many cars are this small and then one that really isn't the same kind of size so yeah let's uh, get out there right we're gonna go up against the auto bello in this first crash test 60 mile an hour as per usual so let's just firstly pause and uh, yeah let's get under the way so yeah the auto bello is obviously based on the Fiat 500 but yeah it's substantially larger than we are even though that is far from the biggest of cars so uh yeah, and I have no idea about the actual weight of this vehicle. Because, uh, yeah, it's a mod, and mods generally do not have that much in the way of info on that kind of thing. Ow! Well, the Autobell has not done well, but it's done better than we have. I mean, for starters, it hasn't lost its seats. Which we have. Um yeah. Steering wheel is obviously quite a concern for the uh, auto bellow there, but this has hardly gotten away with it lightly because yeah the seat has moved so we'd be flailed around so much that even with the steering wheel moving up and somewhat away it's still gonna be posing a danger as well as everything else, the roof, now that with the seat has shot up towards it, 
and uh, yeah, the doors and anything else that your hands, arms and legs are going to make an impact on. So yeah, the Autobello isn't great, but it's definitely better than what this uh, Polsky Fiat is. So uh, yeah, no real surprises there. Right, I'm not sure if there is actually another vehicle that is even vaguely similar size to this, so... Yeah, I'm not sure which to pick, to be honest. Let's go for a Satsuma. I know it's a decent size more than we are, but it should at least uh, be reasonably uh, well uh, accustomed to the Fiat Polsky, Polsky Fiat even. If it doesn't crash the game, that is. Come on, there we go. Right, so these are both slow cars, they're not quick. Well, the Satsuma is probably actually the slower of the two, to be fair. I'd be surprised if it does get up to 60 mile an hour. Oh dear. Polsky Fiat is going for a wander. Satsuma's gotten away with that fine. I don't think even it, it was doing 60 mile an hour, but I don't think it really matters. Because it's gotten away with that perfectly well. But the Fiat, with its doors now sticking about 3 feet higher than they were originally, has not. There is nothing left of that interior, I don't think. Yeah, it's all just a mangled mess of badly uh, positioned seats now that they've moved around and metal. Yeah, that is awful. So, uh, yeah. What's going to happen if we go up against a car that really isn't meant for this... Uh, really isn't the same kind of size? Oh, I don't know. Let's go for a Roma. And let's go for the off-road version as well. So, see if we can ride right under it. Or right over it, in the case of the Roma, that is. Instantaneous death. Oh dear. Tried to get it perfect, but obviously these two cars wander around a bit on their own. It's quite hard, but it has made the Roma roll over, which I don't think has happened with any other vehicle that it's gone up against. Well, the Roma's gotten away with that fine. Even though it did roll over, it's not damaged it whatsoever, so we don't really need to care about that. What we do need to care about is whatever's left of this, which still moves somehow, but yeah, considering the uh, entire front of the car has evaporated and is now where the driver and the passenger were, that is not obviously a success whatsoever. But then again, we weren't really expecting it to be because, yeah, the Roma is substantially heavier, larger and higher in ride height, whereas this is none of that. So, uh, yeah, a resounding failure from the Polsky Fiat there. It only really managed the uh, rollover test and the uh, 30 mile an hour small overlap impact test. Everything else has been a catastrophic failure. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's no surprise given how small, lightweight and old it is. Because even though it's from 1994 to 2000, it's still based on a 70s design. So, uh, yeah, no major surprises there in how bad it is, but it's still remarkable that a car like this was still made right up until the year 2000. So, uh, yeah, pretty awful car. But it is a fun mod, and, uh, yeah, you can get a lot of fun out of it with the more powerful engines and the fact that it's easy to roll over even on its own, never mind with any uh, additional help. So, uh, yeah, fun mod, but by no means a safe car. Nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!